Hey guys, um, I'm going to give you, this message is about a message I heard in the 1980s, early 80s. So, it's out of Isaiah 8, 19 through 22. But go ahead and go read all the way back to 8, 11. And I'll tell you why in a second. But 8, 19 through 22, but it, I, my printer broke. So I just haven't had a chance. I've got a couple of them in storage. I just haven't had a chance to dig them out. Um... So I was going to print it, so I'm not really prepared. But it talks about they're going to listen to wizards that peep and mutter. You turn on your computer, it peeps and mutters. Guys, all this stuff has become idolized. The Lord spoke to me that we lost a generation. Everybody's got their head up there. Well, I won't say that. Um... Their phone, their tablet, their computer, their Google, Facebook, Instagram. That's why I hate this stuff because of the spirit that's behind it. But, I'm, you know, it's time for the Christians to take this back over, this land back over. But it's become a God, guys. Even the name Google, Google, Goofy. You tell people things that are in the scripture and the Bible and true and dreams and visions and things that you know are true. Right away, they get angry, mad. Who's your source? Well, who's yours? Google? Hey, you're listening to your source, all right? And that source is probably the devil. Just don't, you're blind to it. Sorry, guys. We become a nation of idols. Look what we do with the abortion. Look what we do with the LGBT. Look what we do now with the censorship. Everybody shut up. Shut up, lock yourself up. Who's your source? Man, you can't, I went to, I was, I'm an old guy, guys. I'm almost 60. I drive pretty, probably like an old guy sometimes. I'm driving through a parking lot at a grocery store, looking for kids that cut out in front of you, people with carts, just trying to be cautious, you know. I'm not going very fast. I'm not going very fast. I'm not going slow, but I'm not going very fast. Fast enough to stop. Some lady cuts out from the bushes, the hedges, behind cars. I mean, literally, guys. A foot, six inches away from my bumper. I'm driving. She's blabbing on her phone. Didn't even stop talking. Just looked at me with this hateful look like if she had a gun she, or a knife, she'd shoot or stab me. And just kept walking and talking. Yeah, that might be a soapbox. I get it. But no. We've idolized too much stuff, guys. This country's full of idols. We better turn back to God. We don't have a lot of time. So this last one that I put out, this last message about not having an, uh, not having a voice in the election it has nothing to do with the election. We vitalize the election. We vitalize the president. We vitalize the Democrats versus the Republicans. You're a demon. You're not. You're this. You're that. Everybody's mad. Where's Jesus in all this, guys? We've neglected the cross blood of the lamb who God really is I'm not saying I'm preaching to the choir because I'm, a lot of my friends on stuff on YouTube and some, some of you guys are really good strong Christians and there's there is a few pastors out there a few preachers out there that are still saying this and some and even more are getting more and more bolder great thing it just to me it doesn't seem like there's enough of us but God has a purpose. Maybe I'm not seeing them all either, too. You know, I'm not I'm not perfect either. But that my point was that if we don't do something about all this madness that's going on around us, we won't have an election. Well, guess what? The man people are idolizing, honestly. I'm not a Trump hater or a Trump lover. I got a bumper sticker on my head. It's, just, it's not a campaign ad. I know it's going to make people mad on both sides, probably. There shouldn't be a side. It should be Jesus. He's even saying they want to stall the election. I get some of it why he's saying that to a point. He's being duped and deceived, of course. I'm not knocking his ability and his, and his, and his smartness either. The CNN will tell it's just lies or whatever, but fine. 
he's being deceived for the information, but he also knows that it's going to be a sham election, some kind of bogus vote on the, on, on the website. Technology, again, back to the wizards, can't even go vote in person. Everybody, you know, against voter IDs and laws that you have to show a picture ID. What? Why? If you get stopped by the police, I'm, I think, but not maybe not now, because we've thrown those guys under the bus badly as a country. It used to be though, where if you got stopped and didn't have an ID, I think you could get a, a ticket or arrested. Honestly, I think for not having an ID, they used to arrest the homeless people. From what I remember, that could be wrong, but correct me if I'm wrong. But that's just because you don't have an ID. Well, you got it. Shouldn't you need an ID to vote? And if you're that worried about it, are you guys? Then help people get their IDs way before the vote. There was plenty of time six months ago to get this stuff straightened out. Put your money where your mouth is. It's time to do action. But anyhow, guys, I'm going to get off of all that because it's just a distraction. Where I'm going with this is that all this technology is demonic, honestly. It really is. Oh, I, I can hear it now. Okay, I got a comment on it now. I'm, I'm probably going to eventually take it off. I left it up there. Some guy harassed me about garbage. I put my big boy pants on. I don't care. Some of you people, all these people, everybody's wearing a mask. Man, it might as well be a diaper, guys, for some of the stuff that's coming out of people's mouths. Honestly, it might as well be a pair of pampers. I put on there why I won't and don't wear a mask and I'm not backing down and changing that. But I don't want to make anybody sick or unhealthy either. Praying about it. It's like, man, God, I, it might have some effect, but it's the spirit behind it. Where I'm making my where I'm making my stance, where I'm action. I'm not talking about it. I just don't do it. Guess what? Hello? spirit that's behind all this guys the shut up lockdown if the masks are so important guys i mean come on let's get real that's why i put out there this piece i'm about to say once you ever see most of these newscasters wearing one most of the dr fossey all these people you know they're on the news and all over the place where's their mask oh but it's so important Okay, great. Like I said, go to one of the biggest retailers, grocery store chains, whatever. Go to your favorite grocery store. Gotta have a mask on. Great. So you got a mask on. Half the people, employees included, it's down around their chin, around their mouth, not even cover their nose. Doctors say it. Okay, take it off. I don't care. Facebook or all you yahoos. It's true. People half wear them. Okay, so great, they got a mask on. We'll go to the fruit and vegetable aisle. Stay there five minutes. Kids to adults, avocados. Everybody's checked, I do it. Because they're hard to find ripe ones. They're either too ripe or not ripe. You can't really see, you have to almost check them. Tomatoes, bananas. People are eating grapes out of the bags. Where have their hands been? They just come from the bathroom? What have I been doing with them? Oh, but you got a mask on. Oh, great, awesome. It's gotten to the, it's, it's, man, it's just sheer stupidity, guys. Because it's one of those, don't, don't do as I do, do as I say. All these people barking so much about it aren't even half the time wearing them. But it's that important. No, it's not what that, that, that's why I said that about the spirit. The spirit behind it is they just want you to shut up, cow down. It is about population control. They want to control the population. You can't go anywhere without a mask on. You got to do everything according to the, the, the God of this world, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, the Googles. The technology, the people with money, people bark, who's your source? Well, who is your source? Mine's God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. It's called the Bible, the book. Open it up, read it. Read it and weep. Oh, 
all this stuff you got to do. I posted one, a plane full of people. I mean, it's just got to where it's like, man, plane full of people, but, but you can't go to church. Oh, and I reposted this guys. Some lady had a thing on there that her heroes were people that killed cops. Glorifying murder. Whether it's a cop or not, it's still murder. But that's even worse, honestly. Free speech. But yet don't go sing in the church. Ask, I'm going to put a plug in for this guy. He's a great guy, honestly. I don't even know him. Kent, I think it's Kent Peters is one of them, and there's another couple of them that are, they got a church right outside of an abortion clinic. They're getting sued because they're singing too loud. It, it, that's not the main reason. The main reason why is because they're preaching the gospel and the, the, the people that are taking people's lives. And you know the, the real word behind that, but or tell them to shut up. Don't sing. Oh, but you can, you can broadcast and it's newsworthy and that you want to, that your, that your heroes are murderers. Oh, but it's free speech. Well, why can't we speak about Jesus? about God, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And that this, I'm not saying that the corona is the, I'm not saying it's not serious, I'm not saying don't take it seriously. I'm saying that what they're using it for, they weaponized it to destroy us. Lying. Government, media, these big mogul, business moguls, they all got their reasons, but you know, one of the main reasons is the idol of money or power. Idolized it, guys. I'll end with this. Well, that's probably why most of us aren't millionaires and billionaires, because you know what? We might fall down that same trap. I've seen some pastors that started out decent, and now they're just, it's hogwash what they're preaching. And actually, it's a little bit farther than that. So I'm, it's, going, it's gone down a level of demonic. They're teaching false doctrine. Not even doctrine, they're just teaching false. Started out okay. So that's probably why God doesn't give a lot of us money because, you know, we may fall into that trap too. I don't know. You know so pray for those people, of course. Maybe, but maybe not. I don't know. I'm not, not, I'm not backing down. I'm going to tell the truth, guys. It's a 40-year journey to get here, guys. I'm not, I'm not, not, I'm not shutting up. That'd be a no. It's like wearing a mask. That'd be a no. Like, I, I don't know if I added this, but that guy, one of the guys, I don't even know who he is. You know, I don't care that he commented some stuff. He's just... I don't know where he's coming from. I kind of do, but just it's on my YouTube notifications or whatever and comments. It went real harsh, but not some very, very, not very nice stuff. I put put my big boy pants on because I got a person, a, a pastor of a church, that said some way worse stuff than that to me. My message is to all guys. Me, I'm a watchman, and I'm going to warn the world. But my main, for I don't like this guy. But my main war, warning is to the to the people in charge. It's not a grief. I mean, it's not a beef. It's a grief of the Holy Ghost. I am going to say this. It's going to become a message one day. It's just not all the way there, but part of it. Some things I'm gonna have to say to certain certain leaders and pastors and different people. Repent or take your sign down, but leave God's people alone. And that's not to all y'all. I'm you know, because I'm not like I said, I'm not throwing this throwing the baby out with the bathwater. 
there is some good gospel going out there. There's some good solid churches. Maybe not not perfect, of course not. I'm not either. That's that's my whole message. Of who's your source? Of the five a.m. prayer, of listening. Man, I gotta take it to God too. I've gotta repent too. I've had to change too. You know, believe me, it's one of my messages out there. Read it. A dog named Precious. I had to repent, guys. Because I sinned against my God, my wife, over a dog. Because I lost a dog and it just really hurt. And, you know, not, but, you know, I can give all the excuses I wanted, but read it. It's on, it's on YouTube. Come home, Precious. Read it. Listen to it. We all need to repent, guys. I have to bring it to God every day. I cannot be loose-lipped on this. It's a man. One day I was told the Lord. I said, "Man, God, I could live my whole Christian life without seeing that." But I've got to change in some things. I'm still on the wheel on some things. But I still gotta. Be obedient. So do you. I don't, the, 2015, when he told me to start doing this YouTube garbage, I hate this stuff because of the spirit that's behind it and what it's driving. And everybody thinks they're, thinks they're the Wizard of Oz because they're good at the computer. And they know it all. Do you ever hear... The name of Jesus, from Google, Facebook, Bill Gates, any of them. You might hear a little bit, very little. You hear a little bit about God, very little. I hear some of that in some of these churches. They just they they use it loosely. Man, guys, you're on dangerous ground. You're mocking the Holy Ghost. You better be very careful. And cautious what you're doing. It's not me. That you need to be concerned about and worried about him. It's not a game anymore, guys. I'm going to end with this. Everybody's, I've said this. I said this to some Christians. I said this to some people. One virus took the church out. Man, people get mad. It's true. Where was the power? Why do you think the world just kept steamrolling and running over us? They, they didn't run us over with the bus. They back, backed up back over us to make sure we're dead. Trying to. Do I look dead? I'm yet alive. And so are many of y'all. Because people that are on my YouTube and a lot of my Facebook friends and stuff are, man, there's some good, solid Christians out there. I'll throw a plug in for this guy and I'm going to end. David Sellers down in Pensacola, Florida. Man, he's one one tough dude in the spirit. Aaron Buttrick is in the same same realm, just a different area, but man, his message and theme is about repent. Ken Peters is about coming against the, the abortion and the and the mayhem and the the death and the, the blood's upon our hands, guys. We're we're kind of a guilt we're guilty. Of that we just neglected it and let it go and said it's okay it's not okay David tells his message about repent I tell people I'm I gotta tell him this too but I don't think you'll mind but he's kind of like the Jesus police on military steroids but his heart's pure that's where that's where I'm at guys try the spirit to see if it's the spirit of the Lord same with Aaron he's a little Seemingly a little rough, or, but he's dealing with a lot of rough people, guys. He's on the streets and that, here in Dallas, dealing with the homeless people. And they got some real big issues, guys. A lot of them pretty, pretty tough, torn and broken up. He's available and he's doing what the Lord told him to do, which is feed the people. And minister to them, too. You don't believe me? Pick either one of them. Go with either one of them. Down in Pensacola, Florida, or go preach on the streets with David, or go preach on the streets with Aaron. Spend 
spend an hour, a couple hours with them, and you'll be weeping and crying between the porch and the altar, I guarantee you, when you see how some of these people are living. But instead, we got our faces stuck in the Facebook and the YouTube and the Instagram and the technology. Technology, technology, technology. My phone broke. Long story short, it's been t it's been a nightmare, guys. I could have went and just went and bought one, but I needed the company to take care of it. They owed me a phone, but they sent and gave me two brand new phones that both broke. One was under warranty at eleven months. And they gave me a brand new phone. They didn't extend the warranty. <clears throat> two months later, that one broke. Man, guys, you're selling junk, so I was just going to go buy one, you know, a couple hundred dollar phone, I found one for 160 and a pretty good phone, you know. So got to thinking about a brand, but I was like, no, they, these people owe me a phone. It's a nightmare to get one. I finally got one. They gave it to me for a buck, but I was like, when I, I finally told them, like, it's a principal thing, guys, but I only had a phone for a week, over a week. But, yes, it's been a hassle. But it's been a blessing, too, to not have one, honestly. I realized, wow. Kind of quiet. I can drive somewhere and my phone's not beeping and blabbing at me and just nobody's calling. And most of the time it's just some sales call. This is, a, you know, this is so-and-so with air duct cleaning or so-and-so with your, your health insurance or this is, you know, you bought your credit card even though it's not even my credit card company calling me. It's some other bogus people I'm just trying to drive somewhere guys get somewhere do things I'm trying to do and sometimes that's my prayer time too but anyhow guys this stuff is destroying us I'm so busy doing this on the computer and on your cell phone I went to the doc I'm gonna end with this I promise I went to the doctor Sitting in the lobby like everybody else does a year or two ago. Some lady sitting there in her maybe 30s. Three kids. A little bit of bitty baby, maybe two years old. Maybe a year old. Just a little kid. Got a tablet. Every one of them had a tablet. And she was on her cell phone. The whole time, and you know, you know, doctor. This one was a bad doctor that took a long time to get. It was in a way because I had to have some special tests done. But for some reason, this one was just you know, some of them I get right in, some of them I don't. This one I didn't. Just got a message, a notification that was what I was looking at. So I don't know what it is. It says, said, remind me how you know God's plan. I don't know if it's good or bad, but this is how I know it. Pooping and muttering wizard stuff. No kids up, no grandkids, no nothing, no wife. Me and the dog. And it could be the opposite. It could be no husband, too. You know, I'm not going to work. I don't, have, I don't have any distractions if I choose not to get them. And that's when I'm listening. Okay, God. I always ask him, what do you want me to do? Pray first, read, read the word, you know, do YouTube stuff, whatever. I always ask him, what do you want me to do first, God? And sometimes it's different. But I always ask him. That's where I'm getting it from. That's my source. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Open your Bible, guys. Start with that. This is one of my favorite things to do. Jesus, what would you do? I don't know. And I don't. And I've been walking this for 40 years. And I still don't know at all. Not even close. Except I know where to go. To the cross. To Jesus. God, the Holy, that's why we can enter in to the, to the throne to the bold, with boldness through the blood of the Lamb. I know that I know that I know that I know.
way too much that I could share with you guys. Love you. You too. Use what you got. Because Jesus did with the loaves and the fishes. So, love you guys. Um, let's get off this technology trap curve. Because it's destroying your spiritual walk with God. You use it, but don't abuse it. Love you guys.